All right, so today we're gonna to try to save a bunch of money by not buying a uh, OEM Raptor grill. Um, and we're gonna to try to use this sheet from uh, carrails.com um, and make it work. All right, this is what we're starting with today. This is the double XL plastic mesh from a uh, customcargrails.com. The sheet is just under 48 inches long by 16 inches uh, wide, I guess. Um, it was supposed to be 48 and 16, but I just measured and it is a little short, unfortunately. So hopefully I can still make it work just fine. Um, so what I, what I wanted to do was avoid paying, and I'll show it on the screen now, the crazy price for an OEM uh, Raptor grill. Because it says Ford on it, um, they basically kind of like have the market cornered. They can charge whatever they want for it. So those are going for five, six hundred dollars. It's, it's crazy. Um, and other companies used to make them, but Ford went around and with a bunch of and started suing people apparently to get them to stop. So uh, this is this is my solution to avoid all that cost. And I honestly think um, it's going to give it kind of a unique look. Um, let's put it down here. So I honestly think it's going to kind of give it a unique look. It's going to show off the, uh, the intercooler a lot, which is pretty sweet. And, um, I think it's going to actually add some, help me with cooling as well. Cause as you know, my truck, the EcoBoost likes to get hot. Um, I, it is improved by far, but I'm still trying to, you know, keep it as cool as I can. So without having the two black bars that I had before from the FX4 grill on here. And now I'm also going to be avoiding the forward lettering across, which would uh, also uh, block airflow. But yeah, so hopefully, um, basically what my plan is, I'm going to make, I'm going to put standoffs off of the four bolts. So these are just, you know, on the, on the driver's side, there's two equivalent bolts on the passenger side over there. So I'm going to make standoffs with some aluminum, uh, probably just bend it 90 degrees, drill some holes, and then use these pins. And I'll put the, uh, the clevis pin on the inside. So that way um, you can remove it from the inside and not the outside. All right, I'm trying to make my initial game plan here um, and do a little bit of a mock-up. So what I did first, obviously I opened the hood and um, I put this little L-shaped bracket that's used for securing an Ikea dresser to a, a wall or something like that. But I put that little L bracket here, vice gripped it on. I think I'm gonna have to have something like that there um, when I'm when I'm done uh, with the setup. Some sort, some so, something to capture uh, the grill from not like folding back in. And I'll probably need something similar on the top here as well. So um, I think what I want to do, I'm gonna keep the I guess this like factory edge on the bottom because I think that'll look little that'll look nice uh, to have it on the bottom, and then I'll have the factory edge on the uh, factory edge on the sides as well. Um, it's gonna be a little weird because these go up on an angle, and obviously the grill is kind of like square, so it might look a little odd. It might look like a little bit of a gap. Um, I don't know if there's any way I can avoid that. So I think I'll be um, cutting this top edge here to get to fit under the grill once, once the grill is closed. All right, some progress has been made since my last update. Um, as you can see, I got a little piece of like angle aluminum riveted down to the, uh, the valence down here. I think I'll do a better job of capturing it um, and helping it align to the, the valence itself. Over here, I've got a couple brackets kind of made up. As you can see, I had a notch down there because there's kind of a, there's a contour on this like little um, core support thing. So my next step is going to be a little tricky. I'm going to have to somehow figure out where I need to make this next bend to kind of like make you know the mounting surface for the grill. Um, I think I'm going to have to get the hardware and get a depth measurement with the grill to kind of see how far offset I need to do the bend. Because obviously, if there's nuts and washers back there, it's going to add some uh, some thickness to that. So, so I'll probably mock up the uh, the hardware and um, 
maybe I'll uh, tape it to the grill or something like that because also I don't know exactly where it's going to land on which one of these holes. So um, it's going to be a little bit of um, maybe some guess and check. But um, all right, I'll, I'll let you know what I figure out. All right, before I get too much further, I want to go over the hardware that I'm, I'll be using. Um, I'm using a 3 8 24 uh, threaded stud that has a pinhole, a cotter pinhole right here. Um, and it has, this is the two inch long one, so it's got about one inch of uh, thread and the other inch is just unthreaded there. So obviously then I have matching um, nuts, so this is, you know, 3 24 and I want the black oxide finish so that way it kind of blended in, blended in a little bit better. I didn't have to worry about paint coming off or anything. And obviously just an, an accompanying uh, three inch washer. So um, the one measurement I need in order to get these brackets uh, kind of aligned properly is the height of the nut and the washer here. So I did measure that uh, with the calipers and I got uh, pretty much exactly three eighths of an inch. So the, um, the grill is going to sit against this surface on the washer right here. And so what I want to do is make sure I get a three eighths inch gap between where I want the grill to sit and where I bend the bracket to be. All right, this is what I got so far. As you can see, I got the bracket bent into place and I went a little bit past 90. I think it's gonna work out uh, fairly well with the grill. I might adjust that and fine tune it as, uh, as I get the fitment close, but there it is. Um, as you can see, I marked a hole here and on the other side, of course. So I'm gonna drill those out and I'll start getting this thing, I'll fit it up in place and I'll show what that looks like in a second. All right, so here's a little sneak peek. Um, I got both pins in on the bottom here and um, got a position of pretty much where I like. Um, let me lift this hood up and I can go more in depth. So it's a little, obviously it's pretty floppy right now because I don't have any upper pins in, but I think once I get that in, um, it'll tighten it up a bit. Um, I do have some, sh I did try to use some shims uh, to keep some distance off the valence here so I don't, you know, there's no contact there while I'm driving around. Um, just a couple things to note. So, and I knew this coming in, but I had to stack some washers here and this is kind of temporary. Well, this is definitely temporary, actually. Uh, stack some washers between the uh, cotter pin and the back of the aluminum um, bracket here. So um, I'll probably go to the hardware store and find a find a nut or something uh, to make a spacer that's really uh, that really tightens this up and eliminates any kind of play. Um, because I think there's going to be some movement, some rattling with that. Um, one more thing I want to I'm going to have to do is I'm probably going to have to put a center standoff here, similar to what I have on the bottom. So I'm not exactly sure what that's going to look like yet. Um, maybe I'll somehow incorporate it into this full race intercooler mount. I'm not sure. And I think it's just going to be um, a lot of the same. I'm going to use another piece of aluminum here on the uh, on these top bolts and repeat the process. So, um, and then once I do that, it's on to uh, trimming the top to get it to fit as close under the hood as I can. And hopefully, I'm, I'm really hoping you don't see any, any of the trimmed edge. So that might be kind of a slow painstaking process, but I think it'll be worth it. It's already looking really cool. Um, you can see it that, you basically see straight through it. You can see the, uh, the intercooler. And obviously it's gonna be functional and blocking debris from getting in there. Um, you know, obviously there's gonna be a gap here, kind of a, kind of a bummer, but I think it's still going to uh, serve its purpose. And, you know, the truck's going to be a good, uh, you know, 10, 20 foot looker when I'm done with it. So we'll see, uh, we'll, we'll see how it looks at the end. All right. So I think in order to get the top brackets aligned properly, I'm going to have to trim this down in order to get it to fit behind the lip of the hood here. So as you can see, I used a chalk marker to kind of sketch my path and I'm going to cut. I think I'm going to end up using just like wire cutters it might be kind of painful and take a while, but I don't really know of a better way to do that. Um, so I 
kind of like left about an inch, maybe an inch and a half high um, above the lip here, just so I don't, don't cut it too short. Because I definitely don't want to do that because that would uh, <laughs> kind of ruin it. And I'd have to buy a whole new uh, sheet here. But So I'm going to trim this up. They kind of get get it stuck stuffed behind the grill and then start building the brackets. All right, so I got the uh, top brackets in, basically just using the same methodology that I used for uh, the bottom there. Um, I think it's coming together pretty nicely, and as you can see, it, I have it all trimmed. Um, and I guess it's sitting, it's not super, it's not exactly level right now because I kind of kept it high where I could. The uh, There's those little, like, I don't know, teeth things there. Um, so I kept it high where I could, and I don't really care how this looks um, when the hood's up because it um, doesn't matter. Anyway, so um, everything's looking pretty well and straight. The only thing I want to mention is also I, I did find some... I, I'm using these 716 low-profile nuts as spacers in there. And it's going to work... It seems to work a lot better than having all those washers. I might, I might secure them in there somehow. I might not. Uh, we'll see. I don't think I'll be taking the grill off that much. So maybe I'll just leave them uh, kind of those nuts on there loose. So the next thing I want to do is add a standoff here. So that way um, the, it, when I'm driving down the highway, this doesn't want to collapse in like this. And I'll kind of give it some more structure. And maybe keep, keep it from rattling a little bit. So... That might be annoying. We'll have to see. I hopefully that's not too crazy. <laughs> but based on that, I definitely want to add a little bit of uh, tension to the grill here. So I will. Uh, I'll make sure the grill is sitting where I want it. I'll close the hood, and get it all lined up, and then I'll start getting some sort of bracket here. Um, if you don't have an intercooler, you might have to get more creative. Maybe you'll go off these these bolts up here and just make a little bracket that comes out. If you want to try to do something like this, but I think I'm just going to use this bracket here because it's close and it'll be easy. All right, this top standoff is in. Super simple, super easy. Um, just secured it with some hardware I had laying around. Um, so yeah, I think it's pretty much wrapping up. I think what I'm going to do now is I will Loctite basically um, all of the fasteners here. I'll do one at a time so that way everything stays in place exactly how I want it. And um, then I think I'm gonna take off all the brackets and I will use some steel it to give it a black coating that, that should last a, a long time. And then I'll show you the, uh, the finished product. All right, so here's the final product. I think it turned out really well. Uh, once I painted the aluminum brackets and it really hides them um, and the grill pretty much looks like it's like floating there. Obviously, I have the four pieces of hardware that's holding it, but even those blend in with the black oxide finish on here. Um, you know, it's not perfect by any means. Like, obviously, we have this gap by the headlight here because it goes up in an angle while the grill is a square cut. Um, obviously, the same is true with the other side. We have a gap on the bottom. I do think I can correct this because the bumper kind of, or sorry, the valence kind of has a sag right now. So I think when I uh, modify the bumper next, I will... Uh, add a support piece up here that kind of lifts this up and kind of makes it more level. So hopefully that um, helps out that situation. Overall, I think the grill, I, I do think it, it does look good. Um, especially if you're 20 feet away and, or if I'm going 20 miles an hour, it should look fine. Um, and I, it's going to work. So it's, it obviously is going to protect the radiator and the uh, intercooler there from any debris. Um, and also it's going to allow like a ton of airflow. And I think this is going to allow way more airflow than the stock Raptor grill or my uh, stock FX4 grill. So uh, for $150, this is not a bad option to me. So, all right, let's, uh, let's wrap it up. All right, so hopefully you guys found this video helpful. And if you're looking at the prices of the uh, stock Raptor grills and you're kind of cringing, um, maybe this is a good option for you. Obviously, it took a little bit of uh, fabrication and a little bit of cre creativity, but I think it turned out really well for you know, being significantly cheaper than any other option out there. Um, so if you have any questions, let me know. If, or if you need any more details, let me know. I'd be happy to help. Thanks.